Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday, the Change Leadership episode this week with Inderdeep Vraish. Hi, Inderdeep. Welcome back. Hey, Vasco. Thanks for having me again. Inderdeep, on Wednesdays, we want to explore how we, Scrum Masters, work with change, because, of course, we know that that's a big part of our job, as we talked about in the Monday episode. So, so let's dive into that. Tell us a story of a change process you were involved with and then walk us through the whole process and share the tools the tips the tricks the techniques you learned back then that you still use today okay Vasco so here what I want to talk about is my personal change how I have gone through the changes different kind of changes and how it changed my own perspective I think the last time I talked about an organization where things were not working and team was not doing well because of the pressure from the leadership. And this is about another story where I joined this organization. And this was the first day in that organization. And as I entered the office, there were small posters on the walls of the, the rooms. And those posters were in so many places. And they were like telling me something. They were the kind of the visual radiators which attracted me as I entered. You know what it was? It was before the COVID era. And they would say, like one of them read as, it's okay to work from home. Be flexible and add balance to your life. No, that was one of them. And then the second one was, it's okay to leave early. And when you leave early from office, just shout. You don't have to sneak out. So that was like, as I entered that organization and I was like, oh my God, this is so open and transparent, right? So it was like... It sounded too good to be true. Yeah, it was. It was like, you went to the washroom, you went to the toilet, the posters were everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, I've never seen such a place like that. And that was like a, you know, dream come true because such a transparency and openness, you know, you create in the environment. And I could see that culture in that organization. And that was kind of, you know, big change for myself. Because for me, what I felt before, that it is, you don't have to talk about good things repeatedly, because people are generally good. Because why do you have to tell anybody Like, why do you have to be open? Why do you have to be honest? You know, these are the things which you take for granted. But no, I learned from there that it is so important to talk about these things again and again. How did that come up, though? Like, I understand the importance of repetition. So, like, intuitively, I I get that point. But for you personally, Inderdeep, like what, what, what caused you to change your mind? Like you, you talked about, uh, for example, expecting that, you know, people are generally good, so we don't need to, you know, overly talk about what's good. But then you change your mind. Like what caused that change in you? I presume certain things because when I read or search for something and internet is full of those things. So it's like if I want to search what is the good team like. So I just presume that if I can find this information so easily, everybody can find it, right? So everybody must have read about it. And I thought you don't have to talk about these things. These are always there about how good teams should behave, how people should behave. So it's like even the Scrum values, right? So these are the values which you have to be open, you have to work in a team, so you have to be honest, you know, you have to respect each other. So it's kind of simple things which everybody should know. So that was my presumption. And I learned over a period of time from this one, when I entered this, I was, oh my God, you know, when you are radiating those things and you are saying these things to people openly, people will you know, they will try to give it back to you as well, right? If some organization is giving you or empowering the people so much, people will do their best to come up to that level, which organization is putting 
trust in you, right? So that was an opening moment for me where it was like, no, I need to with my team, I need to talk about these things on a regular basis. So how do you do it now? These days when you're talking to teams, like how do you bring that perspective and insight to the work that you do? Whenever we have some kind of retrospective, we talk about these things quite often and we try to get some insight out of it. And when I joined this team, you know, one thing which I think which uh, was the most important thing which we did was uh, coming up with a team chart it had everything relating to how we should communicate, what kind of uh, meetings, uh, how important the meetings are, you know, what time they should start, everybody has to be on time. And there was a one small thing in that, that was, there is no dumb question. And because we put it in that in the charter, in our refinement session, there are so many times people say, okay, I'm asking this question because our charter said there's no dumb question. And I can see those questions, you know, what they ask, thinking that's a dumb question. They have so much value because they, those questions, they generate so much discussion in the team. So it's like, you know, creating that openness. And, you know, now we are in COVID situation where, you know, team needs to be bonding more in, you know, because they are stuck in their home and how to make them happy. So we have a culture in our team where we have like, you know, we do fun activity, like even 10 minutes of fun activity within the team. So which I have been very proactive in making sure that we do something like that, which kind of makes an openness and the trust environment within my team. And I think, like we start with one fun activity and we go for like two weeks or one month and then we start another fun activity. And within these activities, we try to find about each other. So the more we know each other, so we can more trust each other, we can build more openness within the team. So it's like there is a big change within me as like making things more explicit. Also a little bit, I hear that you started to consider the the aspect of how the team relates to each other more important than the work that they do. Like, is that so? Like, did I get it right? Uh, it is important because I have seen the team work together much better if they are open and they have that kind of relationship with each other. And, you know, I have, I work with a remote team. So we are people in three different zones. And to build that relationship and the trust, that is so important. Just to give you one more example here, how we had built trust within the team or the relationship. So when I joined the, in my team, so there was front-end developers and the back-end developers. And there was a, you know, there was a big problem if we have just a, some work coming, which is more front up related than backend uh, guys who work on the back end, they wouldn't touch those stories or that piece of work and vice versa. So it was like a big challenge to complete the work. And once we started like having these communications and opening and people said, okay, we should have some kind of a tech sessions regular on the regular basis so that we can transfer knowledge to each other. And now I can see People don't shy away from picking up any kind of work and they will pick up and because they know they have a back of another person who can help them if they are getting stuck and they can openly talk to each other and take help, ask for help from each other. And they, it's such an open and nice communication between and flow within the team members. So they openly ask for, they trust each other and Nobody shy away from, you know, I can't ask this person or I can't ask this person. So it has become much easier to get the work done and the team is being more effective. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Inderdeep. Thanks, Vasco. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. 
And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. Thank you.